Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Y254. It is the touchline, and it is that time for fans on when we talk about all the matches that are coming up. Early kickoff, Tottenham playing Crystal Palace. How is that one going to be? We are here to talk about it. And also, the big return coming home, Ronaldo at Old Trafford today. Will, be, he, will he be in the team is another question we are going to see. And how will United line up against Newcastle? But before that, we are here with Tyra Swayaki. How are you, big man? I'm very well. I can you. see the wise there is coming up, but... Yes, I'm becoming <laughs> wise. Young, but wise. <laughs> Young and wise. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Ken is still here with us. Ken, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm ready to discuss everything European sports. Yeah, yeah. I think you enjoyed your basketball interview earlier with Ariel Okada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something great. Well, a big one there for us. Let's talk about some of the talking points we have here for the touchline. We start with... Mikel Ateta, and he says he has a very good project coming up, but he's got to play Norwich and he needs a win in that. This time there won't be any forgiving yeah. for Mikel Ateta. Mm -hmm. He's got to either win or win. Yes. Against Norwich, there's no ifs or buts. Mm -hmm. Specifically because Norwich are not the cream of the crop. Yes. They're also in that relegation zone. And they've just come down, uh, they've just come up from below, pretty much like Brentford. Yes. But Brentford was forgiv forgivable because it was the first match of the season. But now they've gone on a run of three games, yes. not a single point, not a single goal. Mm -hmm. Patience is running out. I, 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 I've been following um, Arsenal Fan TV, I don't know whether you know about EFTV yes. Media. Yeah. Um, I, this is his last throw of the dice. It doesn't mean that he'll be sacked if, if they don't win, yeah. but the fans will go bizarre. They'll go absolutely mental. They will, they will not accept anything but a victory. Okay, what, what did you make of the Ateta signings for us on this uh, summer? Winter? Because yeah. he is the one who used a lot of money. Yeah. Brought in players people never expected. What did you make of those signings? I think uh, the, the signings they made, they brought in Tavares, they brought in Lokonga, they got uh, uh, Odegaard, yes. permanently from Madrid. And I think those are those are signings that Arsenal could have gone with. Because you look at the positions that are coming in, Tavares is a left back, Kieran Tierney is a quality left back, you know. Yes. If you are a team which has failed to qualify for Europe, you should be bringing players in to take you back into Europe, you know. Uh -huh proper players, players who have been in Europe, who know, who have the desire. And if also you are considered a top six club in Europe, you should, in, in England, yes. you should act like it, act like one. Yeah. Uh, you spend on 50 million, but you don't bring in any, any superstar players to really, really push this team forward. You know, yeah. you sign a big player, the mentality of the others also change. So yes. I don't think the signings improved them, but... Uh, all luck to them in their relegation game today. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they went for quantity <laughs> over quality. Yes. They went for quantity over quality. Yeah. Spent yeah. loads and loads of money. Uh, it's more like a PR exercise, trying yeah. to hash down the funds mm -hmm. and buy time. Is it a case of the manager also not listening to the supporters and he's listening to himself and his project? Because I think uh, this morning Martin Odegaard came out and said that he is hoping to win a Champions League with Arsenal, maybe the Premier League. It is a project that is coming up that will take time to materialize. For the Arsenal fans, that is not something they want to hear at the moment. Mm. Yeah, for them at the moment, they want to hear to see their team winning games yes. consistently. You know, Arsenal, especially in the past since Wenger left, has just been a, a, a small club. If yes. We should just call it as it is. And you look at them after three games, they are bottom of the table, facing Norwich right now. It's crazy for their players to be thinking of winning the Champions League right now. I think their, their priorities are in the wrong place. They should first think about winning games and getting back to Europe, you know, closing that gap first yes. before wanting to go for titles. What yeah. are the biggest fans of Arsenal is a renowned broadcaster Piers Morgan mm -hmm. and he wrote when he was writing about Wenger out he said that every time I go out to see Arsenal play I'm already in the losing position I'm already thinking of how we are going to lose of how we are not going to win that has got to be a very bad angle where Arsenal is at the moment it paints the true picture of things yes. at the Emirates Stadium yes there's a problem with the ownership they bought a club 
but they're not passionate about football. Yes. They also don't quite seem to understand it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would not have brought Mikel Ateta in to manage a club as big as Arsenal. Yes. Arsenal is one of the biggest clubs in the world, on paper. Yes. You need someone who's up to the task to manage the club. You can bring Mikel Ateta on board as an assistant manager so that he can learn the ropes, just as he was learning at City. But to give him the job of manager, yes. that's a bit of a tall order. And that's not the first mistake they have made. They even at some point brought in Freddie Junberg, who was mm. sort of playing a caretaker role. Again, a former player. So what was the meritocracy based on for him to get this job? Nothing other than the fact that he's an Arsenal legend as a player, but not a manager, a legend based on managerial prowess. So you can see yes. really that this is a team that has lost its compass, it's lost its direction. Yes. And I'm glad you mentioned um, the Odegaard interview. I saw that in the middle of the night. I woke up at 3 yes. a.m. and I saw what he said. A, a player has to be diplomatic. Uh, he can't really come out and say what he wants to say. But what he really wants to say, if you read through those words, he was trying to say, Arsenal should be going for the Champions League winning the Premier League, and so on and so forth. Obviously, he cannot come out openly and say, we are drowning, we, should, we, we are clasping on, on straws at yes. best. The truth is, they are drowning. They should focus on avoiding anything that looks like relegation, because the more they go in that direction, the more impatient the world will be with them, especially their fans. And let me tell you, I have lived... Um, you said I'm becoming wiser, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with my grey yeah. yeah, I've, I've lived long enough to see teams that were really big when I was growing up back in the day. And now they are nowhere in the picture. Teams yeah. like Sheffield Wednesday. They, they decided, Rovers. They did, exactly, Black they won yeah. the Premier League in 1995, would yes. you believe it? Mm -hmm. yeah. But now they are nowhere in sight as yeah. such. So it's not impossible for a big club like Arsenal to just disappear off the radar completely. So their yeah. focus really is not to clasp on straws, but to clasp on some, something that will keep them up. Okay, <laughs> le, le, we've got uh, many games that will be coming up your way. Chelsea is set to host Aston Villa later into the night today. Other games were in the lower divisions there. We've got Brentford playing home to Brighton, and then uh, Southampton will be playing home also to West Ham. A big game that one will be than Watford versus Wolves. But of the eight games in this busy Saturday afternoon, we start off with Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Ken, yeah. big game there, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Yeah. And Nuno Espirito, the Tottenham manager, is was voted the Agas manager of the month. Yeah, you know, it's a London derby. Yeah. Crystal Palace really haven't done anything in their first three games, but Tottenham, on the other hand, they've won one nil three games, you know. Mm -hmm. Nuno bringing in a... More sound, more sound, a better, a better team to yes. create goals with Son and Kane also coming back into the team. Yeah. But for Palace and Aviera, they, they haven't really shown anything. You know, Zaha has been really out of form, I'd say. Yeah. Benteke, you know, he's been a striker for five or six years now who can't really get you more, more goals. You know, they, they really need to find a signing up front. Yes. Yeah. Is, is, it, is it just me or when you look at the Crystal Palace team, they have not made any major signings because it is actually the team that Roy Hodgson left. The Sa are still there, Ben Teke is still there, yeah. the IU brothers are still there. Yeah. There is no one new coming onto that team. Yeah, and that's the same thing. You know, last season with the. Uh with uh, Roy Hodgson, we saw Kuyati at centre back at al yes. for almost the whole season, and at the start of this season, he was still there. And he's even, a midfielder. And he's a midfielder, even though they, they tried to sign uh, Anderson, one, one centre back, but that's, that doesn't make the cut. Yes. The team really needed an influx of funds to really fund, to get in more players and help uh, Vieira draw his dream. Against Tottenham, obviously, you'd have to fancy the team that's on form, the team that's on win, that's winning. But uh, you, you, it's a London derby, you know. Yeah. It uh, there's some sort of pride involved, and uh, let's just wait to see who wins. Yeah. Well, a big one there, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Early kick of that game will be coming your way. Among the probable lineups for Crystal Palace, we can see Guita in goal, Ward, Anderson, Gray, and Mitchell will be in the back four. Koyate comes onto the midfield alongside Gallagher and MacArthur. 
and then the forward line is just as we said Zaha on the right Benteke at the center and then Jordan Ayu on the left side a big one there for Crystal Palace but one thing that this season round that is coming up with very good mechanisms on how they are playing is the Tottenham side with Nono Espirito but Song Myung is not on that lineup for Tottenham will it be a big miss for them yeah, obviously you'd have to miss Son. You know he's been one of. If if it's not Ken, it's Son for Tottenham. You know, yes. always always their standout player. You know, a great dribbler can shoot with both feet. And he, even though Kane had uh, issues with the management, with the fans of leaving, Son stayed loyal, even signed an another contract. And you know he will obviously be a big miss, but uh, he will be back soon. It is a team that also has changed when you look at uh, the way they have lined up so far. Uh, you look at uh, that lineup for them on uh, some of the players that have come out. Lodi still is in goal. Sanchez has been pushed to the fullback too. Reguilon is back on the fullback three. And Tang Tanganga and Dyer then that defense. Then we've got Hodgeback, Skip and Wicks in midfield. And then a very promising Tough lineup in the front there. Lucas Mora, Kane, and Ali in the forward three position. Good mm. for Tottenham. Yeah, really good. Especially now that they've got Dele Ali playing yes. regular football and he's, he's becoming more sound, you know. He's the Dele Ali we used to see in 2016 17 because he is playing more and more football. Yeah. yeah. Now, big question there for Patrick Vieira is the one that we've got to ask. Can he maintain Crystal Palace Tyrus? I don't think so, yeah. but I'll give him his credit where due. Yes. First of all, I'll start with the minus before I get to the positive. Mm -hmm. He started off very slowly. If you watched Crystal Palace's first game this season, yes. he just he sat through most of the time. It's like he was a spectator. Mm -hmm. He wasn't contributing to the team in terms of giving them inspiration, in terms of lining them up tactically on the game situation. He wasn't hands-on. Yes. Second game, pretty much the same story. They lost their first two games. Their third game, okay. he showed his true colors. Yes. This time he came out mm -hmm. guns blazing. He was passionate. He was, passionate. Yeah. he was doing everything a manager should do. He was ticking yeah. all those boxes. Mm -hmm. And we were speaking about managers getting jobs on meritocracy. He did not go to Crystal Palace based on meritocracy. But because he's Patrick Vieira, World Cup winner, Euro European Cup winner, uh, he's, he's invincible. In invincible at yeah. Arsenal, that landed him the job. And this time it showed that, well, if he actually puts his foot on the gas, yeah. the vehicle can move pretty fast. Yeah. And Crystal Palace were able to nick a draw. That was brilliant. Then. Today he goes out and I don't think he'll meet a weaker Tottenham Hotspur side. This is the right day to play Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, the absence of Son due to a calf injury he got uh, over um, the international break is a blessing in disguise for Crystal Palace who are at full strength pretty much. Yes. And this is a day when he can probably try to win but I doubt he'll be able to win. Yes. They're pretty much weak at home, Crystal Palace. They do better on the road and they're playing at home today. Uh, a draw would be good good enough against the league leaders. Yes. But I think tactically Nuno is better in terms of being switched on Tottenham are better. It's a tall order for Patrick Vieira. Y yesterday I was having a pin somewhere and we had this conversation Ken of Tottenham might pull a lace that this season, the way they have started early with this win, is this something that can happen? <laughs> it won't happen. It won't happen with City, Liverpool, United and Chelsea still there, you know? Yes. It's just, I, I think they've had three uh, fairly easy games uh, because Tottenham are a big club, they're bigger than Wolves and all those teams are. Yes. But you know, as the season progresses, you now meet the guys, heavyweights meet heavyweights, and that's where yes. the, the league is decided. Mm -hmm. If they can manage to beat City, United, Liverpool and uh, Chelsea, yeah. then they can win the league. But uh, if they cannot match up to the other heavyweights, they can't. Yeah. And injuries will play a part also. Yeah, a big part. It's early days. The game has actually already kicked off now, one minute in Crystal Palace playing home. Tottenham Hotspur. What is your prediction on that one? Of oh, guys have jet lag. Yeah. Fact of life. They've come back from international break. Yes. If you follow games, usually after the international break, yes, uh, players take time to adjust. Yeah. And one would expect a weekend of 
quite a few draws. Yes. I think the best Crystal Palace can do out of this is a draw. Failure to which Tottenham will beat them. Ken? Uh, I just see uh, Tottenham winning purely because of the form they already started with. Yes. You know, it's just football. Uh, you never know what's going to happen, but Tottenham should win this game also if they want to pull a Leicester. <laughs> Ali kickoff. There, one of my friends, Eric Injuru, usually says, Oh, go for Ali kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how it is going to happen, that or there, but you are going to see the goal rush. You will be having, I think, a six matches there Arsenal home to Norwich, Brentford versus Brighton, Leicester City versus Man City. A big game there we'll be talking about, and then Manchester United, Newcastle, Southampton, and the St. Mary's will be playing home to West Ham. And then Watford will be home to Wolves, and then early late into the night will be Chelsea playing home to Aston Villa. Mm. A big game. Let's go there to Manchester United. Second welcoming of Cristiano Ronaldo. Big day for the straight for the end today. Absolutely big, big day. Historic. Yeah. Uh, there's usually this debate: Are you Team Messi or Team Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Yes. I'm Team Ronaldo. <laughs> I lost my sleep at 3 a.m. I'm not really a yes. Man U fan, but I'm a Ronaldo fan. Yes. I haven't slept a wink uh -huh. since 3 a.m. today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Cristiano Ronaldo will be involved at some point, according to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Manchester United's manager. Yes. Now, does that mean he'll start or he'll come in off the bench? Mm -hmm. Either or but he'll be involved according to the manager. Yes. And from a marketing perspective, he should be involved. From a footballing perspective, he should be involved. Why? Because Manchester United, after that slow, after that brilliant start against Leeds United, sorry, yeah. uh, for their first game, their next two games were rather slow. They're, they need Cristiano Ronaldo. They need that edge. Mm -hmm. And were it not for Greenwood, who's been carrying them over the line, Yes. United would be further down the table. Now they're sitting sort of pretty, but they need that extra edge. Yeah. The manager is not really up to the task. I think he's reached his optimum. Manchester United is bigger than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's done a terrific job. He's done a fantastic job from where he got the team mm -hmm. after Jose Mourinho's exit. He's done a fantastic job, but I think he's reached his wits end. They need a better manager at some point maybe <laughs> but now he has the players yes he should be chasing for the title i'm looking forward to a manchester united uh, win uh, uh, but it's, it won't be easy against newcastle it yeah. will be the second debut for cristiano ronaldo at manchester united compare this one <coughs> played bolton mm. i think back in 2003 2004 yeah. Yeah. it is a first debut for manchester united and this one which one will be bigger uh, this one will be bigger because football has grown over the past uh, 12 years that he's, he, he left United. Yeah. You no know, football, Man United really now are a really, really big club in terms of uh, social media, in terms yes. of finances, and uh, having the same 5,000 at Old Trafford uh, this time. You know, when he was debuting then, he was just an 18-year-old kid. Yes. Nobody knew him. Right now, he's one of the greatest footballers in the world, one, uh, the, the most followed person on social media. He's, a, he's an enigma. Mm -hmm. So this one will, will always be bigger than the other one. Yeah. yeah. And what does it bring on to that dressing room now? Because now he is coming on to a dressing room also with winners, the likes of Paul Pogba, won the World Cup with France and everything. Also a serial winner with Juventus. Bruno Fernandes also in that dressing room. Hugo Falcao, Cavani in yeah. that dressing room, sorry. And then Rafael Verane also comes onto that dressing room. Now add Ronaldo. He's a footballing god. Most of those guys at United are not old enough to remember Diego Maradona. Yes. And so the Diego Maradona of their time mm -hmm. has been, well, they've been a bit lucky, has been Cristiano Ronaldo mm -hmm. and Leo Messi. And now this Diego Maradona of your time, one of them is coming to play alongside you. Yes. Already he's larger than life as a footballer and as a former United player. He's, he's going to share with them so much knowledge. He's going to share with them so much experience. He's going to share with them so much inspiration. He doesn't even need to talk. The guy just walks in and you just, you, you, you can't fluff your lines. You have to play at his level yes. to try and fit in. 
it's not for him to come down to your level. That's why I said with this kind of players now that United have, and with Ronaldo as the cream of the crop, they should be chasing the title this season. But um, I don't think they'll be able to win it. And oh. it's a very bad time for Newcastle to travel to Old Trafford today. Mm. They need a win, but not a good day to look for that win at Old Trafford. Yeah, and it's not a, it's it's really not a good day for his, for them. Because yeah. right now, you know, the, everyone will be in the stadium, you know. The support today at Old Trafford will be tremendous, you know. And yes. when you have the fans against you, everything against you, and Cristiano Ronaldo debuting against you, and yeah. uh, today also, you know, the team will be... Uh, Varane will be there today, most yeah. likely. Sancho is also there. It's just going to be a bad day for Newcastle, from whichever... Unless they can do something amazing, which then will be a bad day for Man United yeah. that no one saw. Predictions, quickly. I think Manchester United will win. Uh, when you say predictions in terms, do you, do you mean in terms of score, score yeah, line? In terms of scores and winners. Oh gosh, you had to do that to us. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I think did. Manchester United will win. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I think it will be, gosh, with Newcastle, you never know whether they'll turn up or not. Yes. But I think it, it will be 3-2 to Manchester United. Okay. Four one or five one Man United. <laughs> this prediction there wow. from Ked Andrews as he predicts that Manchester United might win that one by four or five one against Newcastle. And here we've got a three two for Manchester United against Newcastle. A big game here this Saturday on the touchline. We'll be following it up and giving all the update. Crystal Palace versus Tottenham seven minutes in and it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Another big match that will be coming your way. We're going to start from last season. It was Leicester City versus Manchester City. And last season, Leicester managed to score five. Pastor Pep Guardiola managed the team. What will happen today? So another game in Gold Rush, Leicester versus Manchester City. How will that pan out? Let's start with you, Tigers. Brendan Rodgers versus Pep Guardiola handed Pep one of his heaviest defeats in football history. Yes, and very hard to beat a Guardiola team five two. But in my, no, not even five two to score five goals against yeah, yes. a Pep Guardiola coached side, and Brendan Rodgers managed that. Can it be another World Cup today for Leicester? Jamie Vardy of Leicester has the best goal scoring record yes. against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City in the Premier League, yeah. as it is. And Leicester have refused to die. For those that thought they won the English Premier League by fluke in 2016, they'll be shocked to see that Leicester are still somewhere up there yes. fighting for honours. Last season they won the FA Cup yeah. against all odds. And now they are they faced. They won the community shield too. <laughs> they the won Pierre's the community shield. There you yeah. go. And now, oh yes, they beat City. Yeah. And <laughs> and now <laughs> they are facing City today. Yes. And they are still strong. And Brendan Rodgers, fantastic manager. Yeah. But I don't think this time around they'll be able to beat City. Mm -hmm. I think Manchester City will will win it. It won't be easy but they have to win it in the first half because if you look at Leicester last season, they were a second half team. If you didn't bury them in the, second, in the first half, yes. they would come out guns blazing and bury you in the second half. Mm -hmm. So I think City have, their, their statisticians should have worked it out and seen that this is Leicester, you beat them in the first half. You don't spare them for the second half. And therefore I think Manchester City should be able to walk away victors 2-1. Do you think so? Also the birthday for <laughs> Jack Grealish, standing 26 today in Manchester City Colours. Yeah. Will be a very big difference for Man City against Leicester. Yeah, yeah, obviously he will, you know, their most expensive signing and the players around him obviously love to play with him. Yeah. But you know, Leicester, you, you can never really know what to get. They can't beat the big teams, you know. They, yes. Many will consider them a heavyweight in in because of their performances in the past two, three years. And yeah. that's exactly how they are going to show up against Man City today. They believe they, are, they can't beat them because they did it. Uh, they inflicted the heaviest defeat of last season. Yeah. And they believe they can do it again. And uh, with the players they have in midfield, you'd fancy them. And, uh, but you, you know Pep is also another guy. He can just run riot on them also. Yeah. So that, that's going to be a really, really tough game for both teams. But uh, 
As I said before, heavyweights, the, the title is won when a heavyweight beats another heavyweight. So whoever wins there will be in a better position. What will, will be your prediction there for City against Leicester? 2-1. Yeah, two, 2 Manchester City. Two, one. Manchester City to win 2-1. Yeah. 3-3. Three, three. Two and Leicester. Two and Leicester. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some big one there because a big change because we, we talked earlier <laughs> about the record Manchester Leicester City has against mm. Man City in this uh, day and age and under Guardiola and Leicester City has managed to do better than them and considering they also won the Community Shield. But when when you look at the injuries that these two sides are having at the moment, Leicester City have a problem in their defense. Johnny Evans might be fit or not fit against and uh, Vestergaard also in that team. Manchester City, they are only going to lose, let's say, Gabriel Jesus and Ederson if they are not cleared. You know, the Brazilian players who traveled for the Brazil and Argentina game. So if they are not cleared, they might not play in that one. But it's a tough game to predict. Well, they were cleared by the authorities. Yes. And they had camped in Croatia a number of those players who had played in South America. Yes. Uh, because they hadn't been sort of red listed in Croatia. So they were training there. Yeah. Now that they've been cleared, I don't know whether they, they, they are in, they'll fit into the team's plans. Maybe they coordinated uh, via the internet and stuff like that. This is what you need to work on, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And so when you come and join the teams, you'll just pick it up from there. I, I really can't tell. So that is something that remains to be seen. But, yes, it's, it's a tall order. I mean, both teams have a, a, a fair amount of players who went to South America to play for their respective countries. Uh, either way, it's going to come down to tactics, and I think Guardiola will just about win it to one. Well, very true there. And one key player to look at in that fixture has got to Jami Vardy. Out of the 10 games he has played against Pep Guardiola, he has scored eight goals, including two hat-tricks. So it will be a key one for them in that game. We've got still other matches that will be played today. We'll be talking about them. And uh, we've got Brentford, Brighton there, uh, Southampton, Western, Watford, Wolves. But before we talk about those games and everything, we've got to talk about also Chelsea, Aston Villa that will be coming later into the night there. Thomas Tuchel has got also another monster at the Stamford Bridge. Yeah, you know, he, he knows how to use his players. He knows what substitutions to make. You know, he's a really, really tactical coach who knows how to really drill a team to play. And also with the coming of Lukaku, you know, that also raises the stakes, you know. Yes. Uh, last season, we saw Timo Werner missing a lot of... Uh, he wasn't as clinical as people thought he would be. And uh, it sort of carried on to the beginning of this season. Yes. That's why bringing in Lukaku, a person who buries such chances in the box, mm -hmm. was really important for Chelsea and Tuchel's style because they also have the great crosses of the ball. And uh, for them to face an Aston Villa side, which also invested in their squad uh, in the summer, bringing in guys like Ings, Buendia, mm -hmm. Ashley Young, to try and actually reach uh, the, the European spots. Uh, it's really great for Villa, but going up against Chelsea, if they also, if Villa wants to be in Europe, they also have to show show up against the big teams yeah. and play proper football. And uh, you look at the Chelsea Lukaku; uh, they are talking he has recovered from an injury from international duty, but N'Golo Kante and Christian Pulisic will not be in the team. Also, Thiago Silva could miss out because of that. The other discussion we were having, uh, and uh, Newcastle also might miss Emi Martinez is also in quarantine and the Emi Buendia on to that game. But it's another big game for Chelsea considering that even when their star players are not in the team like N'Golo Kante and Pulisic, they still got backup. And when you look at like their game against Liverpool, the other, I think the, the second was it the second or third match day, third. red card, but they still held their ground to come on to a draw. Chelsea is about tactics. That's why um, I was referring to the Manchester City, yes. Leicester encounter. Okay, Manchester City are a bit disadvantaged than Leicester because I think they have more players who pl ply their trade with their national teams in South America. Yes. So I put Pep's tactics against uh, Leicester's and I thought City would beat Leicester just on tactics. And that's the same with Pep, uh, with Thomas Tuchel, mm -hmm. with Chelsea. Yeah. Yes, they have certain players who are perhaps 
given first priority over others in their long list of depth as yes. a squad. And when they don't have the top priority players, they can fall back to the second priority, if we may refer to them as such, yeah. players, but they are in no mean way lesser players than the first priority players. But it's about, it's down to tactics yeah. with Thomas Tuchel. Since when did you hear of 3-4-3 three, three winning uh, in Europe? And he's done that twice with the UEFA Champions League and the UEFA Super Cup. 3-4-3 three, three system. Yes. And in those two matches, those two epic encounters in Europe, he did it pretty much without a natural striker. The one you can refer to as a wild class. Yeah. So with, with, with Tukel, it's pretty much about tactics. This guy understands football right down to a science. He understands the art of the game. He knows when to press and when to fall back. He knows when to have possession and when to let go yeah. and how to be vicious without possession. He's a beast of a coach, a beast of a manager. And against Aston Villa, Aston Villa are not a lesser side. They are no stroll in the park. They'll give as much as they get. Trust you, me. And the longer they can hold on to the game nil-nil, the higher the chances of Aston Villa with their new signing Danny Ings have, yes, of, of nicking a, a, a point or even three points. So the onus and impetus is on Chelsea to win this one early. Because the longer Villa stay in this game, man, the, long, the, is, the, the, more, the higher their chances of getting away with a point or three. Mm -hmm. Chelsea will be in the late kickoff there against Aston Villa at home at Stamford Bridge. Let's uh, get your predictions there, Ken. Uh, Chelsea win 2 or 3 nil. Wow. And then? Uh, I think Chelsea will win by the margin of one goal. Uh -huh. I can't tell you the score line on this one, but I think it will be the margin of one goal. One goal. If not that, Villa will get a draw. Well, big matches that will be coming your way today. 18 minutes in against Crystal Palace against Tottenham and it is still 0-0. Arsenal, Norwich, Brentford, Brighton, Leicester, Man City, Man United, Newcastle, Southampton, West Ham and then Watford, Wolves all will be coming our way after this first early kickoff game at 5 p.m. and then Chelsea and Aston Villa will be at 7.30. But we cannot leave this stage before talking about the big game that will be coming your way tomorrow and it will be the only game of the Premier League that will be Leeds United versus Liverpool. What do you make of that fixture again? I think that's a, that's going to be a, you know an explosive fixture. Two teams with speed, two teams who like to attack. Mm -hmm. And last season, you know, that fixture, the first game of the season, it gave us a crazy 4-3 game. And uh, yes. Leeds have just signed Daniel James, who we know is a speedster. You know, he will fit their style of like, it's, it's called a whatever ball, murder ball, you know? <laughs> murder, murder. Yeah, just ball. keep going forward, yes. pressing and everything, you know. That's going to be a really, really exciting game for the neutrals and uh, also a dangerous game for Liverpool right now because yeah. Leeds, you know, Leeds have come into the Premier League last season and have really become a tough outfit to beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it is going to be a tough one, a game for that one. I cannot deny about that considering that Liverpool will be without uh, Roberto Firmino and uh, there is also another chance of Virgil van Dijk and Harvey Elliott not being fit for this game from the international qualifiers. Well, even with all players much fit, yeah. this is like a derby, it's like a war. Yes. The problem with Leeds is they only know one philosophy, go forward, run like mad. Yeah. That leaves gaps for a counter-attacking side like Liverpool that has got counter-attacking magicians yes. to hit them below the belt, mm -hmm. so to speak. And that makes Leeds vulnerable. But coming forward, you can never write them off. They're as dangerous as the next dangerous team is. Yeah. And therefore, uh, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Liverpool are no longer the Liverpool of three years ago, two years ago, when they won the league title. Mm -hmm. The players they have as the bedrock of that side are now older, slower with their feet, and even slower mentally. Yes. That running game can punish Liverpool, as he rightly put it. Ken was spot on when he pointed that out. That running game can be Liverpool's 
Waterloo. It can be their undoing. Because we've got Daniel James who might be coming in, speedster. Rafinha also in that squad will also run. And there's a Phillips also in that side. Mm. Look at that. Yeah. And you've got a fantastic manager. Don't forget that. They've yes. got a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic manager. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bramford still mm. in the mix as yeah. a striker. He knows what to do. He knows how to finish it off. Yeah. I can see... Uh, these sides battling one another, maybe Liverpool scoring the first goal, but then Leeds fighting to the end and scoring another. I think 1-1. One, one. You, you cannot take it away from Liverpool also, because they've got Mohamed Salah in that team, Sadio yeah. Mane also in that forward line, and mm. uh, the Portuguese, uh, Diogo. Yeah, so it's also a very good side for Liverpool to play. Yeah, I think Liverpool uh, do have a good side to play, you know. And uh, the, the guys you said, if Virgil van Dijk and Javier Elliott don't make the team, I think that will be something they will want to happen because Javier Elliott, when he's coming this season, he's been really amazing, even though he's still a teenager, you know. And Virgil van Dijk, especially when you look at the Chelsea game, he was able to hold his own against Lukaku, against the Chelsea attack. So Liverpool do have a good side, a great attacking trio, even without Roberto Firmino. And uh, they can also get goals against Leeds because, you know, they'll be left susceptible to the counter-attack. Predictions? As I said, I think 1-1. One, one, uh -huh. And I'll stick to that. Maybe Liverpool will score first and then Leeds will score later on. If, if, both, one, teams, one. Yeah, if mm -hmm. both teams play the way they should play, I, I see it as a high scoring. 3-2, <laughs> yeah, 4-3, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. A big game there on Sunday, that will be Leeds United at Elon Road playing home to Liverpool. And then on Monday night football, it will be another cracker there. Everton versus Burnley, another game that we'll be waiting for to watch. What do you make of Everton? Fantastic side. Yeah. They've got um, the the manager whom I had yes. proposed to go and take over at Manchester United from Oli Gunnar Solskjaer in <laughs> Rafael Benitez, fantastic <laughs> manager. Of all, of, hmm? all the, of, all the, of all the teams in the world yes. and in England, if there is one team that a manager cannot cross over from and to, will be Liverpool to United. <laughs> no, 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 no. That. I mean, if he crossed over from Liverpool, to Everton, yes. and now the fans have accepted him at Everton, the intercity rivalry between Liverpool and Everton yes. is much more bigger than the Manchester United-Liverpool rivalry. But you see, it, it, it's like the case of Michael Owen. He left Liverpool, went to Real Madrid, I think then came to Manchester United. And that's the case of Benitez, left Liverpool, travelled around, mm. then ended up at Everton. But, okay, it's football. It's if Ronaldo came back, <laughs> I mean, Benitez can also go back to United. But, he might for Everton against Burnley would be a good game to watch. Oh, definitely. And it's a good game to get back to the season after that international break yes. from. It, it tests you. It's a good test for Burnley. It's a good test for Everton. You really don't want to come back and say face Liverpool, Everton Liverpool after yes. that international break. You want to get your groove back before you can face those giants. Uh, so I think this is a good game for uh, Everton. They can come and test themselves against Burnley mm -hmm. uh, and refocus, rejuvenate and get back. Equally for Burnley, it's a tall order in the sense that they have not been doing as well as they perhaps would have wanted to do. Yes. But this is the time they can make up for any slow or fast or sort of mild start they may have had to the season. Yes. So Everton is a good test for them, but I tip Everton to win. Everton to win again. One key difference in this team will be also the clash of managers. You've got Benitez on the other side, who's coming back to England after a very long time mm. to play coaching outside of England, yeah. but the Burnley coach, yeah. Sean Dyke, yeah, has been good for, for Burnley for some good, and it's not a bad start for Burnley this season. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, Burnley will always cause a challenge to the teams who, who <laughs> attack, you know? Yes. They, they always have a, 
a, a, a really great defensive shape, you know, and also when it comes to the set pieces, they are really dangerous. So for a team like Everton, which which a team which over the past few seasons has started well but finished uh, very poorly, you know, even sometimes out of the top ten when they were high flying in the top four, yes. you know. Burnley will be that sort of challenge on a Monday night, you know. It, in England, uh, it might be cold, it might be then. That, that, will, that will be a totally good game for Everton and for Burnley. If Burnley can beat Everton, they move further away from the relegation zone, you know. They might try to push for another top, uh, top 10 finish. They've had three, I think, in the past five years and they can do it again. But if Everton really want to remain in the top 10, go for a European spot or even push to the number five or six position, they have to win games like Burnley. You know, uh, Arsene Wenger, uh, when he was coaching Arsenal, and he used to finish at the fourth position most of the time. He, he, there's this famous quote where he said that finishing at the fourth position is the same as winning the league because it's not easy. And you look at this season from even last season, Finishing at the top four has been a war. It's a war front. It's a battle there because we have got teams like West Ham United, Everton, Tottenham, Leicester, Leicester. City fighting for that position. Yeah. And it has also jumped over to this season. And one team that is actually good at it and fought for it even from last season is West Ham. Yeah. What do you make of their chances against Southampton? This afternoon also. Uh, West Ham can, can, can win this game, you know. They, ha they have a really good groove, they have really good form, they have really great players. And uh, David Moyes, now that he's been given a chance with uh, a big club in England, you know, yes. he's making his name once again. He was already a big name in England, but right now he's proving his points and he's, the, the doubt is wrong with this West Ham side, which plays amazing attacking football yes. because of their, their forward players, Mikel Antonio, Pablo Fornals, uh, Jared Boehm, they have been really amazing, you know. Yeah. And uh, for them to go against the Southampton side, which lost Danny Ings, but uh, they still, they, they signed, uh, Ward Prowse signed a contract, a five-year contract yeah. with them. They're still a quality side. You know, they'll pose challenge to West Ham, but I think West Ham, at the end of the day, they'll get the win. One player that... Uh West Ham has and who poses a challenge to end team has got to be Michael Antonio. Oh yes, yeah. he's a bit underrated. Yeah. Uh, some say he should have been picked to play for England. Uh -huh. uh, chosen by his, I think, back to his grassroots, Jamaica. Yes. So he went to play for Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he'd have been chosen to play for England mm -hmm. because at the moment England have a sort of well, they wouldn't admit this, but they sort of have their official lineup. The guys who have come in and gelled, yeah. and you don't want to spoil that rhythm. Uh, then why did they choose Bamford and overlook perhaps someone like Greenwood? Yes. Anyway, that's really not up to me, but I still don't think he would have been chosen. He's excellent, well-deserved player of the month last uh, August, and he's Southampton will have to play the way they played against Manchester United if they are to get even that single point yes. against West Ham United right now who are on a roll. I tip West Ham to win this West one. Win. Yeah, West Ham win by two or three goals. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the show here. It has been the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Rosoro. Special thanks to Max Olasike. Ariel Okar was also here in the studio. But also, Ken Andrews, thanks for coming. Teras Wayaki, always a pleasure having you in the studio. And we want to thank our director Fadili and his technical crew for making this show a success. Continue watching Y254. It is the best youth channel you can get here in Kenya. I'm Robert Osoro. Good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast.